Hello, I'm Chris Menard. OneDrive for Business has a really cool feature that's been out that they did not make a lot of fanfare about, but it's an awesome feature. Have you ever needed people to send you files, but not be able to see other people's files that are in that folder? So by default, I could make a OneDrive folder and share it and turn on editing. But if you upload files to it, you could see other people's files in there, even delete them. Uh, Microsoft calls this request files. Uh, to be clear, before I start this, we have OneDrive. But we also have OneDrive for Business. This will only work in OneDrive for Business. So OneDrive is free. If you sign up for Microsoft 365, which is free to sign up for, you will get a OneDrive account. This will not work in your OneDrive account. It will also not work in your Microsoft 365 Home account, which I also have because I tested it and this does not show up. So this is for a business account or an enterprise account. So I'm going to walk you through the request file feature has a lot of advantages. One, no login or password is required to use it. It's easy to use. It works on mobile devices, works on the PC and the Mac. People can upload a file over one gig. I tested that and it worked. Uh, if you're the person that created the folder, all your files are in one place. I can also set a time limit for the link to expire. I can delete the link to expire. And one of the cool features that I found is when people, before they upload the file, they have to type in their first and last name, which get, got put in front of the file names so you can easily figure out who sent you the files. A couple drawbacks that I thought about, though, people that are uploading can't delete or rename files. And also, people could actually share that link. So if you just need to send files to someone and you want to be sure that no one else can see your files, this is a great feature. So let me go ahead and get started with how to create this. So I've already signed in to OneDrive for Business. If you notice up at the top here, it says Chris Menard Training. And it's even got SharePoint.com. So again, it doesn't work with OneDrive. So you're looking at my actual OneDrive for Business account. I'm going to go to New and make a new folder. And who would use this if you're in real estate and you need some documents for closing on a house? This would be cool. If you're an educator, whether you're high school or college, I don't care. This is a cool way to get files from your students. So in this example, it says create a folder just to test this. I'm going to name it A1 Test. Not the best name in the world, but this is just for our video. Create. So I haven't done anything special yet. I just made a folder, which you can do in OneDrive, and you can do in OneDrive for business. But watch when I click over here to select that folder. There is Request Files. You'll only see that in OneDrive for business. You will not see that in OneDrive. So I'm going to go to request files. What files are you requesting? So again, if I was an educator and I was teaching world history, I might name it world history. If I'm in real estate, I might name it house closing for whatever house you're closing on. That way, the person that receives this, the recipient, will know what specifically you're requesting files for. Just again, to keep this simple, I'm going to type in world history. What's really cool about this is after I send this email, or get the link actually, the people that have the link, they do not need to have OneDrive for Business installed. They don't even need OneDrive because it's browser-based. It also works on an Android phone because Christian and I tested it this morning. I've got an Android. Christian has an iPhone. It works on that also. So basically, all you need is a browser. There's no passwords involved, no accounts to sign up with. So here we go. 
Recipients will see the above request name and can upload only. They cannot, I'm going to tell you one of the drawbacks, but I actually like this. If you upload a file as the recipient, you can't go and delete it, you can't edit it, you can't view it. So here we go. Next. Watch this. Here's the link people can use to upload files. That's exactly what I want. I'm going to copy the link. So I clicked on copy link. I could add a message down below. I don't need to for this example, but I could. When I hit done, your file request was created. And you do get notified when someone uploads files. So from here, I've got that link. I could email it. I could send it as a text message. I could, if I wanted to, put it on a website. I could put it on a social media site. So let me show you what that looks like when someone gets that link. Doesn't matter how they get it. So I pulled up a web browser. So assume I got that link with an email. I would click on the link. And it says, Chris Menard is requesting files for, if you recall, it asked me, what are these files for? And I said, world history in my example. I can go and hit select files. There is absolutely no need to sign in to anything. It's just a file upload, and that is all it is. So what files do you want to see? When I was testing this earlier, it let me upload whatever files I want. Movie files, JPEG images. PNG images, Excel, Word, PDFs, it didn't matter. You can actually select as many files as you want. Since we're in here testing, I'm just going to do a few. Open. Now, this is also a cool feature. So if you share that link with just one person and you send it out to them and they upload some files, you would most likely know it was them. But the way that link works is Microsoft wants them to type in a first name and a last name. So Microsoft will take the first name and the last name and put it before all the file names. So you know who sent you the files. What a cool feature this is. So let me go ahead and put in, I'm, I'm acting like I'm somebody else that got the link. So I'm going to put in Sue Martin. I'm going to hit upload. Another cool feature right here, watch this. I just got a notification, Chris Menard, that, that Sue Martin uploaded files to my OneDrive for Business folder. Sue realized she forgot a file. She can go hit upload more, add more files, and upload some more. So Sue can keep uploading files. So I wanted to show you how this looks on a mobile device when someone gets your link. So I'm going to open up Gmail as an example. There's the link. I'm going to click on it. One little minor issue is you actually have to get on your phone and scroll this over just a little to the left. Christian had to do this also on his iPhone. I'm on an Android phone. But here we go. Select files. And this is a really cool feature. So if you needed to record a video right here, you could camera video works on Android, works on iPhone, and there's files to upload files right here. Now, since I just told you how much I love this, one of the drawbacks is this. If you're the person that's going to be uploading files, make sure you only upload files that you want the other person to see. Because again, Sue Martin cannot view that folder. She cannot delete what she's already uploaded. She can't edit what she's already uploaded. She's just uploading files, but more importantly, this is what I love, she can't see what other people have uploaded. So if 12 other people uploaded files, and it's all in one folder for me, I'm only going to see, Sue would only see, that she uploaded files. She doesn't even know who else is uploading files. Plus, I've got them all in one folder. I didn't have to go make 12 folders for 12 people. So it says upload more. I'm not going to. I'm going to pop back in to my OneDrive for business account.
And there we are, A1 test. And there, if you notice, Sue Martin did not type her name before the beginning of the file name. It automatically put in Sue Martin. That's why it asked for the first name and the last name. Now, something else you need to know. I'm going to go back to files. Whenever you go and make that new folder, And whenever you click on, by default, Request Files, it gives you a 30-day expiration. You cannot extend the 30-day expiration. So I can't say I want the link to last more than 30 days. But what you can do, if you wanted to, so I'm actually doing this for the second time. <clears throat> Copy link, done. So I've got the link copied. I would go email it out or whatever. What you can do if you want to is you can change the permissions from 30 days. You can make it less. So I'm going to go to Manage Access. I'm going to select the three dots. So two things I could do. One, since we're talking about the 30 days, is I can change this and make it less than 30 days. This is a Chris Menard tip. If you know you need files from someone or a group of people, if they haven't sent you those files in five to seven days, they are not going to send you those files. So maybe, maybe give them five to seven days or maybe give them 14 or 15 days, but I don't see any reason for giving them 30 days. Unless it's a long-term project you're working on, then you'd probably want to leave it at 30 days. The next option is, okay, you've sent me the files that I've needed. If I hit this X here, it removes the link, so therefore no one can upload files anymore. I hope that helps. Um, if you have any questions about this really cool request files feature, put them in the YouTube comments below. I appreciate your time. Have a great day. Thank you.